All right, Chris, welcome to Dad Saves America. Thank you, it's good um, to be here. I'm really excited about this because this is our last shoot of the year and that means we're coming up on New Year's resolutions. <laughs> my, my busiest time of year, yeah. for sure, yes. So you are the guy for this. <laughs> so I guess my first question is, we were talking about this before we started. I'm, I just turned 45, you're coming up on it. You're in amazing shape, and I am a mess. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. So, this is job security for me. So <laughs> you, you get a get out of jail free card there. So, but no, seriously though, like, uh, like we were saying, it's kind of before we got started. I'm 45. I'm you know just shy. I'm actually coming down. I was 203. I'm now like 190. Okay, good. So, but I should be like 175. And I'm more. I'm especially concerned about this because I have a long history of diabetes in my family. And so this is like this moment for me where I'm like, okay, my dad got diabetes when he was 44. Right. And I'm 45 now. I don't have it yet. My sugars are fine, but I'm really concerned about it. And it's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. And I'm 100% it. Italian and food is like a religion. <laughs> and you know, every kind of thing that's tasty is a treat yes. for me. Yes. So like, help me. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, first of all, the scales go in the right direction. So I want to give you kudos for that. That's amazing. And so if you can keep that trend going, obviously it's only gonna be beneficial for, for your journey, for where, where you wanna go. And then on top of that, you know, here's the thing. Um, my approach and what a lot of people have seen me, you know, b do before in the past, you know, it used to be very, very strict. And um, if I could go back and I'd do it all over again, I would be so much more lenient because the thing is, you know, strict can work for a very short period of time. But at the same time, we need to be, we need to honor and respect culture and traditions and really I, like ultimately you know food it does need to be enjoyable you know this yeah, as well yeah. as I do and so the thing is like you start depriving and restricting you know people from from the foods that really make them feel good okay then down the road if, if we don't have other mechanisms in place that can be a big problem and so the thing is I don't want to here's what I, I would do as far as you go I don't want to take anything away this might sound a little bit different, but, and it's the whole concept of adding and not removing. So I'm not gonna come in here and say, and take away your desserts or anything like that, but I would, I would definitely want to, say, to start exploring what we could add to your meals that are going to, number one, be high in fiber, higher in protein, higher in water as well, so like things that are gonna keep you fuller longer yeah. that would then prevent you from overeating subconsciously later on in the day. So like there, there's there's all kinds of different things, and it's it'll it would certainly require you and I sit, sitting down and saying, okay, I want you to just share with me everything that you love to eat during the day, and I, I would go through the entire week because because we all we love variety, yeah, right? Yeah. And so and I'm sure especially being full full blooded Italian, <laughs> I'm sure all the different pastas and the desserts and everything yeah. like that. Dare getting rid of dairy. I, I find, I, you know, we've ma we made this film about the way animals are raised for food, and my wife is mostly vegan, and I, I've been occasionally vegan, but man, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing, you don't, uh, well, especially for diabetes, you don't necessarily have to give up cheese, because it's, it's the sugars that you really want to, that you want to watch for, so let's, let's tackle dairy, let's push it down the road. <laughs> Why give it up now? You know, well, what if we made some other changes, and you saw your biomarkers improve significantly? without removing dairy. Would that sound good to you? <laughs> I, 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 I feel like this is a commercial or something. Yeah, but. Yeah. I, I, I'd be willing to buy that. Sign right, me for up. For sure, for sure. So that, that's the thing. There's all kinds of different solutions we can do, but they'll, they'll be so beautifully unique to you and your lifestyle. And that's what the thing is like, when I'm gonna work with somebody, I wanna come in and I, I want them to literally just paint their entire lifestyle for me. You're the artist. And I'm gonna have you literally display everything for me and we'll just go through and make tiny little changes because if I came through and changed it all in one fell swoop, which I've done a lot, that a lot before in the past, I might be able to get you very fast results in a very short amount of time. But I would lose and you would lose them in the long game. And that's what this is really all about. It's not just getting you, you know, incredible biomarkers into 165 pounds in a six pack, you know, by March, right? No, it's, yeah. I want to set you up for life. And so, and in order to do that, it's so important to make one small change at a time. And I can't stress that enough. And that's, that's this is where my approach, I'm a perpetual student. You know, I, I've done a lot in the past and there's a lot I would change. And the more I learn about human behavior and the psychology and the, the emotional and the psychological aspect of it, it all boils down to making small, tiny, sustainable changes and then stacking those in order to, to really create a sustainable lifestyle for someone. 
So I want to take a step back to that learning process. Yes. So you... take me to where you first found this passion for fitness because, um, you know, this is your life is, is fitness and in well-being and health. So wh where did this start for you? So what started, I'll give you a little, a little backstory but behind it. I was the smallest kid in, in school growing up from, from about fourth grade to seventh grade. That's when the bullying started. You know, I was an easy target because I was such a tiny little kid. And, uh, and where is this? Um, I grew up in Salinas, California. So born in Arizona, I jumped around a lot. Arizona, Washington, Idaho, went to California. I really spent a lot of my elementary school years and early high school years in, in California, then moved back to the Pacific Northwest. So fourth to seventh grade, Salinas, California. Um, beautiful, beautiful part of the, the country. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. absolutely gorgeous. But, um, you know, nevertheless, School is school, and when you're, <laughs> when you're the smallest kid in school, yeah. you're an easy target. And so that's when it started. And so I, it was fourth to seventh grade were really, really rough on me. Well, and, and middle school, my son calls middle school the Hunger Games. <laughs> so, and I it's, think that's right. I think it's pretty If you can survive it, you yes. might be okay. Yes, no kidding. But, but surviving it is not <sighs> guaranteed. It was brutal. It was a time in my life that really started to shape some of my own beliefs about myself, because it was during that time I certainly felt powerless. I felt like so much was taken away from me, you know, cause you don't, you know, when, when you're growing up, you know, you, you might think a certain way about yourself and all of a sudden the bullying starts and you don't know how to handle the situation. And then, you know, these bullies, a lot of them are, they're significantly larger than me. And I just felt powerless. And so it was when, were I, you overweight? Did you struggle with weight when you were, when you were a kid? No, okay. I, I, I was just, Tiny. I was really, really tiny. In fact, in fact, I remember in the is fifth the diary of a wimpy kid yes. about you. Yes, That's it's what very, really very is. close. <laughs> and so, um, and then we ended up moving from Salinas to the Pacific Northwest, and I tried out for. And this is my first time. I was a sophomore at this point, and I was still really small at the time. And I, I thought, okay, new school, reinvent myself. I'm going to go out for the football team, and oh. I, like, I'm going to get out there, and I'm going to show them how tough I am. Smallest kid on the on the field. And let me tell you, I, I was in I was in training camp for a week, and they made it really clear that I was not going to be a part of that team. They would push me out of the out of the huddles. They wouldn't <laughs> let me drink water at the fountains. Like it was just it was a really difficult situation for me, and I was the new kid. My parents saw, I mean, we had been living in the Pacific Northwest for a couple of weeks at this time. Yeah. And school was just starting, and uh, they just saw my spirit break even more. Oh. 14 years old, I came home from, um, I, I ended up quitting football. And it was, it was one, of the, one of the few things that I quit, and it haunted me to this day. Um, <laughs> You're going to be all right. The, the, you, <laughs> the, the, deep down inside. Trust it, me, those high school football players are right. very jealous of you. Yes. <laughs> you know, it, it, it all turned out. It all worked out. Because it, it steered me toward my passion. What happened is I came home from school. My parents saw how, how it hurt me. Just again, it was my stature, feeling broken. And I came home from school one day and they had cleared out the living room furniture. And there was a weight set in the middle of the, of the living room so, floor. So paint the picture for me. I love, cause like, so what was your house like? Did you walk right into the living room? Like what was this, what was this experience of coming in and was it a surprise? Yeah, so basically like right through the front door, living room was right there on the left hand side and you kind of walk through into the kitchen and then there's the windows there. So it was literally walking through the front door and there was a couch, coffee table, it was standard living room that you yeah. can imagine. And uh, you know, there's like a, a teak chest off in the corner. If you want to get a little mid-mod, yes, little mid-century yes. modern action, little and 1970s stuff. You, know, you better yeah. believe it. Yes, teak yeah, of yeah. all things. So I walked to the door and I looked to the left and everything's cleared out. And there is a the beautiful, um, one of those like universal style weight sets there with the bench press, the butt of the chest, the, the pec deck. It's got a lap pull machine. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they had, the, yeah, they had the, the bicep curl, the preacher curl there on. I mean, it was the whole thing in one. And it was sitting right there in the middle of the living room. The only other piece of furniture they actually kept in the living room was the uh, entertainment center and the TV. Thank goodness. <laughs> it is America. Yes, yes. <laughs> And so, so these were all, all the pieces for your future were in place. You got the weight set, the television there. Yep. And okay. so I, I, I and I'll, in full disclosure, for the first couple of weeks, I didn't really know what to do, like exactly like how to mess around with this thing. So I would sit on the bench and watch TV. And I would just I'd sit there because the couch was gone. So I'd sit there, you know, and just start flipping through channels. And then eventually I'm like, ah, you know, I'm just going to lay under this thing and. 
huh, okay, so I can do the bar. Throw some fives on there. Say, oh, okay, I could do oh, That's kind of cool. Ooh, that burns. Ugh. You know, yeah. racked it. And it became a thing every single day I would come back, come home from school, put a little bit more on the bench press, and I felt myself getting stronger. And I, sure enough, I was, what was difficult wasn't difficult anymore, and I could rep out a few more. Let's get into some pec deck and maybe do some preacher curls. And I started playing around with it. Did and, you get any magazines or anything to like oh, help yeah. you? Did you go, well, you went down the rabbit hole? Not yet. Okay. I was just playing around with it. This is, this is me just, just discovering it at, for myself. Just, and my parents just kind of let me do what I needed to do, and they, they let me just find it as, as, as I was ready. And then sure enough, about three months in, you know, I'm in the bathroom, close the mirror, you know, they got the, the, the cabinet open, I'm looking for something, I close it, and I'm like, huh? Oh, hold on, mom, mom, come here. Then, here come the magazines. I mean, oh. it was Flex Magazine, Muscle Fitness. I'm like, yes, oh, this is it. And it was like, this, I, I felt, I just, even now, chills. I just, it gave me my power back. And I felt, even though I was still small in stature, I felt strong again for the first time since fourth grade. And I was like, this is the answer. Like, if, if I might not be the biggest kid out there, but I can be the strongest, and I can be the fastest, and I, you know, I, I can be. Are the, you fast? I'm. I, I got pretty darn fast. I'm, I'm almost forty-five, also. So right, right. Yeah. I mean, no. I could. Take, Were you fast? I could take off correct, fast, and I'd probably question. pull a hammy right now. <laughs> and so I was fast, and and that I'm telling you, oh, you know, and then before you know it, I'm just I am knee deep in every muscle and fitness flex magazine you could possibly imagine, and I was just I was absorbing as much as I possibly could. And it was feeling so good, and I was I was applying the the routines, yeah. you know, and all the different programming, and it was like that. Be, I was obsessed, and then actually to the point where I only worked out at my house. I mean, I, I still worked out every you know whenever I could, but then I was so confident after a few months of doing that, I started working out in the the school gym, and so like I would go to the gym, like to the school gym after now, school. Now you were confident because you felt like you weren't going to get judged by the other guy. Like what was the what was the reason that that was a confidence move? I, when I looked in the mirror, I saw muscle. And so the thing is, I don't know what everyone else saw, but I saw the difference. And yeah. so I walked into the gym, I was like, hey ladies, you know, what's going on guys? <laughs> and, but the thing is also, I, I remembered all the things that I would read. And so before I, before I knew it, I was in the gym and I was giving other people advice on how to do their bicep curls. And, oh, you want to take that to failure. You know, like aim for 10 to 15 reps on that set. Hold on, I'll be right over there with you. Okay, good. That, okay. That's looking really good. Hey, you bring your elbows in just a little bit. Drop those, those, drop those shoulders back. And I'm just like, before I knew it, like- You were training. I'm not kidding. I, this is like, I should have been paying attention then because like it was ingrained in me. I just, it made me feel so good. It gave me my power. I was so excited to share this with other people. I was just incredibly passionate about sharing it with other people, about educating. And if I, if I knew better, I would have said, okay, this is my path in life. Yeah. I was forcing a, a slightly different path at the time, but nevertheless, like, it, was, it was clear as day. It was right there in front of me. If you like this clip, we've got more where that came from. Be sure to watch the full video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our new videos as they come out each week.